n'est-ce pas <rire> Aujourd'hui, nous allons continuer notre conversation sur la protection de nos alliés et aussi l'appui pour l'Ukraine. Et je suis très heureuse d'être ici, ici avec mes collègues de l'OTAN pour cette conversation. Pour le Canada, nous avons à peu près 800 soldats, forces armées canadiennes en Lettonie. Et aussi, nous avons à livrer une équipe avec expertise en cybersécurité de trouver les menaces importantes à ce temps. Uh, merci d'être ici avec, uh, avec nous aujourd'hui. I am pleased to be here today to continue the conversation with our NATO allies about the protection of the alliance and support for Ukraine. Canada has approximately 800 Canadian Armed Forces in land, at sea, and in the air in NATO's eastern flank. And we are also uh, deploying a cyber, a cyber security team with expertise in finding and searching out cyber threats. And that has been ongoing, and we are very pleased to contribute to the protection of cyberspace as well. Donc je pourrais recevoir vos questions aussi. We will also be discussing to put the new strategic concept into practice. Uh, when you take that concept seriously, what does it really change for NATO? NATO will continue to be strong and united in terms of threats and potential threats uh, that face the alliance. That is the basis of all of our conversations here, and including today. And I look forward to that conversation with my colleagues. You're always talking about uh, weapon systems for U Ukraine. When do you think uh, will be the time to talk about uh, some kind of peace? Well. If Vladimir Putin wants peace, he can leave Ukraine. Until that time, we need to continue to do whatever is necessary to support Ukraine's sovereignty and stability in the short and the long term. There are three main categories of aid that we are discussing. Air defense missile systems, continued 155 millimeter ammunition, as well as tanks. And in all three categories, Canada has been contributing and we are working closely with our allies to ensure that aid of all sorts continues to be put on the table for Ukraine. Canada has contributed over $1 billion dollars of military aid for Ukraine and over $5 billion dollars of aid across humanitarian, economic and military aid. That's just an example of the type of commitment uh, that countries are putting on the table. We had a very fulsome discussion yesterday. I was pleased to meet with my counterpart, Minister Resnikov, as well. Minister, and what about practical support to partner countries? You, all, as I know, you already discussed, such as Georgia, Moldova, and Herzegovina, Bosnia Herzegovina. Well, of course, the illegal invasion of Ukraine has caused instability in the surrounding area, and that's exactly the type of issue that we need to continue to work on together as an alliance, supporting the initiatives in those countries to enhance their own security and defense systems. But again, uh, we are all united on the need to ensure greater peace and security as a defensive alliance ourselves. Minister, how do you see discussions on defense spending and what is your uh, stance on 2% proposed minimum mark? Um, I am a representative of a country uh, that was one of the founding members of NATO. And so our commitment to NATO stands firmly here with the collaboration and cooperation that we have seen just over the past year, but really it's over decades. And I will say that our defense spending has been increasing since 2017, uh, indeed uh, by 70%. And we also had an $8 billion dollar commitment in our last federal budget. Having said that, we need to make sure that we recognize that Canada is the sixth largest defense spender of the alliance. And in terms of getting new money out the door, Canada is one of the leaders. Uh, we are also taking a very firm leadership role on NATO's eastern flank as the framework nation for Latvia, where we are seeing about 10 countries being part of that uh, group. 
and we are moving now with those countries to brigade level. So I met yesterday with the Minister of National Defence of Latvia. I also have been meeting with my counterpart uh, framework nations to make sure that we are doing whatever we can cooperatively to enhance the security on NATO's eastern flank. Do you think Europeans contribute enough uh, to the, to the defence spending, defence funding? I think that that is a continued issue that we're going to make sure we focus on together, but I can't underscore enough how united the alliance is at the current time, not only on Ukraine, but also on security issues writ large. We recognize the importance now more than ever of standing united, not only in terms of the NATO alliance, but also in terms of NORAD, uh, which, of course, is the protection on NATO's western flank as well. Merci beaucoup tout le monde.
weiter zu lernen, als in Deutschland das ist. Und das könnte durchaus noch zu einem größeren Streitthema innerhalb der NATO werden. Denn NATO-Generalsekretär Jens Stoltenberg, der hat jetzt schon ganz klar gesagt, es ist eigentlich nur noch, oder auch in der Zukunft, ist eigentlich nur noch eine Untergrenze. Und Boris Pistorius hat sich.